first, the 2024 election is in full swing. And yes, age is an issue. I'm a grown man running against a six-year-old. Well, Donald has had a few tough days lately. You might call it stormy weather. That's President Biden taking shots at his Republican opponent, former President Donald Trump, during last night's White House Correspondents' Dinner, poking fun at Trump's campaign and court cases. For more on last night's event, we are joined by Niall Stanage, White House columnist for TheHill.com. Niall, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Natasha. And Niall, you were there. Tell us more about the atmosphere, the standout moments. I don't know that there are that many standout moments from White House correspondence dinners ever, Natasha. <laughs> I used to refuse to go on in protest, and I've uh, moderated with age and gone the past couple of, of years. I mean, President Biden's speech was kind of typified by those remarks that you showed, a campaign-style speech. Colin Jost, of course, the main entertainment. Uh, you know, it was OK. It's a hard gig for a comedian, I think, trying to find that middle ground to be uh, cutting enough to be funny without insulting everybody. You're a tough cookie, Niall. That doesn't sound like uh, you had the best time. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm very ambivalent about that event. I think yeah. it's very hard to justify. Anyway. Niall, I, I do want to ask you about Democratic Senator John Fetterman speaking exclusively mm -hmm. to News Nation this weekend, condemning the protests happening on college campuses, um, despite some of his Democrats, a fellow Democrat standing with those demonstrators. Let's take a quick listen together. It's very clear that uh, there is a very uh, germ of of anti-Semitism in all of these protests, you know, and then sometimes it flares up. Of course, it's a great American value to, to protest, but I don't believe uh, living in a pup tent uh, for uh, Hamas is really helpful. So, Niall, just how difficult will it be to find a solution that satisfies all involved, both, both nationally and internationally? Is there any likely path forward here? No, I don't think so. It certainly isn't domestically. I mean, that language of Senator Fetterman's would be something that a large number of voters for his party would disagree with, never mind the protesters themselves. Of course, anti-Semitism is wrong. It's as reprehensible as any other form of bigotry. But there are 34,000 people dead in Gaza, 10,000 women and 14,000 children among them. Do people not have a legitimate right to protest about that? I mean, the protesters clearly think there's a moral imperative to protest about that, right? Uh, to protest those actions. So, you know, there's no real uh, common ground there. Yes, yeah, certainly. And, you know, there were even protests outside of, of the dinner last night, uh, not dissimilar to the protests still happening on college campuses this weekend. Uh, it seems the president walking a fine line right now with his statements about those protests. Is the wave of unrest over this war going to eventually harm him in the long term, though? I think it could electorally because it divides the Democratic Party right up the middle. There are, of course, a number of pro-Israel Democrats, Senator Fetterman among them. There are also people who are extremely critical of Israel's conduct of that assault in Gaza and the devastation that it has wrought. It is very difficult as a political or electoral matter for President Biden to navigate away between those contrasting views. Now, one more topic. I know you wrote several articles for TheHill.com covering uh, week one of Trump's hush money trial. And you write that at its heart, there is an uncharged crime here and that it pertains to election interference. Tell us more about that. So basically, the reason that former President Trump is charged with a felony is the idea that falsification of business records, the crime with which he was charged, was done to facilitate another crime, which is basically election interference, concealing from voters information that they would otherwise have known. Now, of course, former President Trump and his team deny that was the case, and he has not been charged with the election side of this. So it gets a little technical, but clearly prosecutors trying to make the argument that it's not only about bookkeeping, it's about trying to alter the course of an election. Interesting. And, and just one more follow-up, Niall. That is to say that they believe there's a subsection of voters who may have voted differently had they known Trump's affair, had known about Trump's affair with Stormy Daniels. Is that right? Exactly right. Yes, they think that if people had known that, especially in the wake of the so-called Access Hollywood tape, the alleged affair, we should say, then they would have voted differently or would have had the potential to do so. All right. Niall Stanich, always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.